We spent 10 years in South Africa. It was under apartheid, which of course meant everything was categorized racially, separated in what you could and couldn't do, creating great eruption on campus. And we had come to join a brand new ministry that was highly concerned about what was going on in Johannesburg, University of Witwatersrand. While it was primarily English and white, there were some African students. And we were a ministry that was committed to being multiracial. So almost every decision we made had political overtones. And the very fact that we were sometimes in those places was challenging. Both on the campus where we had the opportunity to rub shoulders more and then as the ministry grew, the leaders of the various groups had no idea what to do except get together and pray. And God began to put together ways in which we could both locate the Christians who wanted to do something and pray together and begin to reach out to the other students and begin to produce a oneness across the bodies so that there was a reconciliation that took place between what might have seemed different strains of Christianity because we prayed together and God developed the leadership in such a way that we had both a African leader and an Afrikaner by background which would normally be looked at as the opposite and I worked as their assistant director and the three of us talked through everything so there were just constant lessons of how is God going to work this one out. I remember one of the African men who came from Soweto shared his testimony and another one who'd come from one of the homelands and was a chief in the homeland and shared his testimony. And they sat down at a table with some from other racial backgrounds and one of them said to them, you know, thank you for sharing your testimony. I never even knew that an African had a soul. So, and yet they became, some of them became business partners across the racial lines out of what God did to reconcile. So the outcomes were all opportunities to see God break down barriers and uh, provide and give direction in ways that we could have never anticipated when the first vision came that said we ought to try and do this. So I think real reconciliation took place in the body and then many people experienced that reconciliation could take place with God. And in that kind of a context, God brought many kids to Christ through the various groups, all as a as a measure of what God was doing under the One and the Spirit theme. To reconcile and experience God's work in our life by His Spirit. And reconciliation is a word that's really a overall descriptive work of all of salvation because God takes away all the barriers that He has between us and Himself. And on the cross, He took care of them all for everybody, but then He takes care of them specifically for those who by faith receive Christ and appropriate what the blood of Christ does on the cross. And so when we see it take place in humans, it involves forgiveness usually just like it does with God, but it's acknowledging the barriers that are there and then dealing with the barriers, seeing them get removed, often with asking for forgiveness and acknowledging sin and issues that we have produced. And then the other person accepting that that is real and the two of them accept that as a forgiveness and so then they can move together in the future. Whether that's a choice in ministry or whether that's a choice in neighbors that we get to know or people that we extend ourselves to. And I find we have to put ourselves in some kind of a circumstance where we reach out to people and finding ways to acknowledge those walls and forgive one another for the walls and remove them, I think is very much a part of that process. And it's not a one-step process. <laughs> it's an ongoing ongoing direction.